All right. Shalom. I want to first begin by giving all praises and all honor and all glory unto my power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rechakodash. And Yahweh is the true holy name of the Heavenly Father, who this world ignorantly calls God, Yahweh Shah, being the true name of our Lord and our Savior, who this world ignorantly calls Jesus. And the Rechakodash is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors unto my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are the true leaders of the nation of Israel that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai has set up through the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide and also to be great examples for the nation of Israel and I also want to say Shalom to the 144,000 men who are laboring and toiling in his work for the sake of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and I also want to say Shalom to the innumerable multitude which consists of the men, women, and children who Yahweh Bashem Yahushai will show his mercy upon in these last days. And I'm the brother Gabar from the GMS West Palm Beach camp. I'm coming back with another Lord's willing, edifying lesson to feed the sheep of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and to the best of my ability. And this lesson, Lord willing, is going to be entitled, Thou hast said that they are nothing. Thou hast said that they are nothing. And the inspiration for doing this lesson, you know, of course, is through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai. But, uh, you know, just something I was meditating on while I was at the uh, while I was at the plantation, you know, just overhearing, uh, you know, a few co-workers of mine, you know, and they were speaking to some clients. And, uh, you know, our people really believe that all people are created equal, you know, and, and that's, that's the mindset of a lot of our people, you know, they fighting for equality, they thinking that, they thinking that we all the same, just because you bleed the same, you know, uh, a cat and a dog, they bleed the same, but they're two different uh, creatures, all right, and that's the same way when it comes to the Israelites, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans. And also you have the Israelite foreigners, the ones that's been scattered. They've been mixed among these other nations. But one thing you can't deny is the spirit. All right. You can't deny the spirit. All right. The Lord, Yahweh Shah said, we are the salt of the earth. So Israel, we are above every nation upon, upon the uh, earth. All right, and let's get that because that's thus saith the Lord, thus saith Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Right? So when you go into this word holy in the uh, Hebrew, that word holy is kodash, which means to be set apart. So let's read this again. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. Right? So this was Moses. Uh, speaking unto the Israelites and it says the Lord Yahweh thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself all right so the Lord has chosen the Israelites to be a special people unto himself all right and that's just like uh, when you was younger and you played with action figures you know you you might had a you might had Batman Superman Spider-Man but for example you liked it you liked your Superman action figure. You know, you chose that to be, you chose that one, you know? So that's the same way when it comes to the Heavenly Father. Because at the end of the day, Yahweh all right, created all the nations. So he created the so-called white man. He created the Japanese, the, 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 uh, the East Indians, the Japanese, the Chinese, uh, the Hawaiians, all right? But the Lord has chosen the nation of Israel to be a special people unto himself. And finish it off, it says, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right? So we're above. We're not equal. We're not lower. But in this society, since we're going through the curses, you know, we looked at as the scum of the earth. You know, all the nations, 
you know, um, you know, mock and ridicule and ridicule us. But at the end of the day, Yahweh has chosen us to be his special people. Right. And since we're so special, you know, why has the so-called small hats? All right. Amalek. Why has this nation took our identity? You know, they claiming to be the J.E.W.'s. J-E-W-S You know, but that's according to prophecy What we would discontinue from our heritage So that's what Jake don't understand That we are The Lord's chosen people And you can see that You know, even in the, the carnal In the carnal aspect Look at all the great athletes That played in the NBA They was all black And Hispanic Or Native Americans You know, and somebody might well, look at Larry Bird. Larry Bird is an Israelite. All right, he descends from a so-called Black, Hispanic, or Native American, and most likely, Larry Bird is a Southern Kingdom. All right, he either from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. Okay, so the Israelites, we we are chosen to be the Lord's chosen people. Oh, so you look at Michael Jordan, you look at Michael Jackson, you look at Mike Tyson, you look at Muhammad Ali. You look at Sammy Sosa. You look at uh, who else we got out there. Um, you look at uh, Dirk Nowitzki. You know, we, we can keep going on and on. All right. But those are just a few instances of how you can see the Heavenly Father's spirit uh, dwelling upon us. All right. Look at all the, the best uh, actors and actresses. You know, uh, for instance, you have Denzel Washington, you know, you have um, um, Michael Jackson, who can dance re really good. You got Usher, you know, you have, um, let's see, who else you have? You have your uh, Whitney Houston, you know, all the best uh, people, all the best inventor, inventors was Israelites. All right, and that's because the Heavenly Father's Spirit is dwelling with us. And how much more in the kingdom? Okay, but let's go here to the book of 2 Ezra, because this was really um, the chapter that I was reading earlier, which made me spark this lesson. All right, so let's go to 2 Ezra, chapter 6, and verse, and verse 54. And it reads... And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. Right? So all nations came from Adam. And it reads, and the people whom thou hast chosen. All right? So we just got Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Okay? And the Lord says we are, the nation of Israel is the Lord's chosen people. So the Lord has a, has a favorite. And it happens to be the Israelites. It says, verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. All right, so the kingdom of the kingdom of heaven and even this planet Earth, the Lord made the world for our sakes. But since but due to our disobedience, our rebellious ways, the Lord put us into the hand of our enemies, the so-called white nation and, and also all the other nations had a hand in our captivity right, and it says and it says uh, verse 56 as for the other people which also come of Adam thou hast said that they are nothing, so the Lord equates the other nations as nothing so, that's going for the so-called Africans the so-called East Indians, the so-called white, the so-called uh, Chinese and Japanese, you know. So the Lord, uh, he equates to these other nations as spittle. And what spittle spit? You know, when somebody spits on the ground, that means they don't care about it. Nobody's going to try to pick spit up off the ground. And that's how the Lord looks at these other nations. They regard it to the Lord as nothing. And finishing off, and it says, But be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them 
unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Right. So that just like as a child, you would play, you would play, uh, you know, water gun. You play with water guns outside. You fill up the bucket, and you running, and you see specks of water fall out of the bucket. That's what the Lord. That's how He regards these other nations. When you have that bu that bucket full of water, and a little water falls out. You ain't. You're not tripping. You know, and that's how the Lord uh, looks at these other nations. They're counted to as nothing. As a matter of fact, um, let's get this. Backing that up. You know, this is Isaiah 40 and verse 17. Isaiah 40 and 17. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. And what is vanity goes into emptiness. You know, so the other nations, they're counted to the most high. Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, as less than nothing. So that's like your bank account is zero. But when your bank account negative, you know, so that's what the Lord looks at these other nations as less than nothing. You know. But it's our people who wants to be like the the other nations, who wants to envy their oppressor. But our people only envy these other nations because of their wealth because of their substance all right because of uh, the resources that they have but in the kingdom of heaven the lord is about to put all these blessings upon the israelites and we're going to have all the resources we're going to have uh, these curses lifted up off of us you know but let's go back to second Ezra 6 and verse 57 and now O lord behold these heathens, which has been, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to and to devour us. Right, and this is the time that we in. We in a time of these other nations, these heathen nations, beginning with Esau, Edom, along with these other nations. They're they're lords over us. When you go into that word lord, it goes into a master. So these uh, other nations are lording over us. And they're devouring us. All right. The book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter says that all, all the nations come together. They are confederate against thee. You know, and they looking to devour us. Right. Because they know that sin is our kryptonite. So what do they do to keep us walking in sin? To keep to keep us in a low, low estate? To keep us devoured? They feed you abominations. They feed you pork. They feed you shrimp, crab, lobster. You know, they uh push all this wicked vibration onto us. Why? Because they know that we the Israelites. They know that if we sin, they get to continue to rule. So this is we are in a war right now. This is spiritual warfare. Look at all the music that our people are into you know r&b talks about adultery rap talking about uh killing one another having sex with another man's wife drugs witchcraft that's what this that's what this devil uh pushes upon our people and he used our own people to devour us and to destroy us right and it says verse 58 but we thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. You know, because the nation of Israel, we're, we're looked at as a comely, delicate woman. We are the Lord's woman, you know? And we've committed adultery on the Heavenly Father. And how do we commit adultery? You know, by worshiping these other, these other gods, bowing down, you know? And that's why the Lord put us in these in this situation. You know, now we in that time of you know acknowledging our offense. You know, we're in a time of repenting and and uh, getting right with our Maker, getting right with Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You know, it says 
verse 59. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an, inherit, an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? All right, and we, we went off. That's why we um, don't possess anything. You know, and that's a part of the curses. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14 is all the curses that the Lord will put upon us if we be obedient and keep his ways. All right, but when you read from 15 to 68, those are all the curses that the Lord will put upon us if we be disobedient. And that's why we not, uh, that's why we don't possess anything. That's why we, the, the first fired, the last one hired. That's why we in the ghettos. That's why our people uh, locked up in these prison houses, you know, because of our disobedience. And let's get a quick scripture backing that up. This is Baruch 4 and verse 6. You were sold to the nations. All right, so we were sold to all these other nations under the sun. Not for your destruction, right? Because the Lord, he didn't put us in the hand of our enemies ultimately to destroy us. Just as a child, you know, you might take away certain privileges. You might give them a spanking. You might put them on timeout. But it's not to destroy them. It's to teach them a lesson, you know? And the Lord, he deals with balance. There's a thing in the world called tough love. And that's what the Lord showing us. And that's what he's showing us now. Uh, these curses that we're going through okay and it says verse finishing off of verse 6 it says but because he moved the most high to wrath he were delivered unto your enemies so these other nations are not our brother they're not our friends they are they are our enemies an enemy is going to is going to destroy you all right if you have if somebody loves you and and they and they your brother they're not going to wish harm upon you you know and that's what these other nations do they wish harm upon us you know Esau Edom putting fluoride in your water spraying the air with chemtrails Esau is defiling your foods Esau is pushing homosexuality and all these things so uh, uh, the scripture says a neighbor worketh, uh, neighbor worketh no ill a brother working no ill towards his neighbor, roughly paraphrasing, you know? So uh, let's finish it off. It says, verse 7, this is the point. It says, For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing to devils and not to Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And that's why we got uh, put into slavery. That's why we don't possess anything. That's why we don't have an inheritance. Because we was disobedient to Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Uh, so let's go back to 2nd Ezra 6 and 59 We'll read that one more time If the world now be made for our sakes Why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? Alright man, we don't know how long this is going to endure Alright, the scripture says that uh, We're supposed to measure the time diligently But it also says in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter That no man nor of the hour Know not the angels but the Father only. So only Yahweh knows that time. You know? So we gotta continue to endure. Continue to uh, push forth this word. Continue to make our body a living sacrifice. And, and, and eventually those who endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we don't know. But we know according to prophecy that we don't have uh, 20 years to go. You know, the Lord said he's going to come back in this generation. Hey, man, we living in that time that the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. So we got to continue to, to be patient, which goes into suffering. All right. But it, but with that, hope that this lesson was edifying. I pray that this uh, lesson was edifying. We close out by giving all praise and all honor and all glory unto my power. Yahweh, Bahasham. Yahweh Shai, Baha Shemachak Wadash.